Jackson. Georgia, we're all, almost there. But we've got to finish the job. Let me hear you if you've already voted. So thank you so very much for voting, for exercising your right and your civic obligation. But know that if you've already voted, your job is not done. Your job is not done until you call everybody in your circle, everybody you know, until you call your family members and your friends, and you tell them to vote. Tell them that the preacher said a vote is a kind of prayer for the kind of world we want to live in. And our prayers are stronger when we pray together. So vote together. Are you ready to win this election? We're so honored to have back in Atlanta the president-elect of the United States of America, Joe Biden. And I'm so grateful to be standing on this stage at this defining moment in American history. I grew up in public housing, one of 12 children in my family. I'm number 11, and I'm the first college graduate in my family. I got there through hard work, grit, and determination, but that alone does not put me on this stage at this defining moment. My parents poured into me the ethic of hard work. They taught me what personal responsibility looks like. My mother grew up in Waycross, Georgia. You know where that is. Way across Georgia. So she believed in hard work. She grew up in the summers in the 1950s, a black teenager picking somebody else's cotton, picking somebody else's tobacco. But because this is the United States of America, the other day, the 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton went to the polls and picked her youngest son to be a United States senator from the great state of Georgia. <laughs> Only in America is my story even possible. And I'm running for the United States Senate because I believe in the American promise. I believe in the American dream, but it is slipping away from too many of our children, not just poor children growing up in the housing projects of Atlanta or Savannah, but in urban and rural communities, disaffected communities across North Georgia. Our children need to know that they have a senator in the United States Senate who understands their struggles, understands the struggles of ordinary people, and who will fight for them. The wealthy and the well-connected have no shortage of representation in Washington. It's time for ordinary people, folk who go to work every day, folk who would love to go to work, but they've lost their jobs due to no fault of their own. It's time for ordinary folk to have representation in, representation in Washington and if you send me to the Senate every single day, I'll have Georgia on my mind. I won't be thinking. I won't be 
be thinking about how I can best represent the insurance companies and how I can best represent the pharmaceutical companies. They have enough representatives. It's time for ordinary folk to have somebody thinking about them. And so listen, we've got work to do. The stakes of this election can hardly be overstated. We've had about 350,000 American souls to perish. That's a lot of empty seats at Thanksgiving. That's a lot of empty chairs at Christmas, the lighting of the Hanukkah candle. That's a lot of empty spaces as we welcomed the new year and folks thought about their loved ones who were no longer with them. And even in the midst of this unspeakable human pain and suffering, what did we witness? We saw the politicians playing games. Politicians who are so focused on the next election that they're not thinking about the next generation. They're thinking about what's in their best interest. You heard the debate this week too often it was really about the politicians, who's up and who's down, who's in and who's out, who's winning and who's losing. Meanwhile, as I walk across the streets of Atlanta and across the streets of Georgia, the people are losing every single day. And they need a voice in their democracy. They, they need senators who understand that we've got to get this virus under control that we've got to get this vaccine safely and efficiently distributed, that we've got to stand up and we've got to provide COVID relief to workers. We've got to help them to be able to get back to work safely. And we've got to make sure that we center the concerns of small business owners. We've got work to do. And in the midst of the work that we must do, we can hardly afford to be divided. And so here's what you've got to do. You've got to tell your family members and tell your friends to vote tomorrow. And when they show up to vote, here is the work that they are doing. Here is the important moral work that they are doing. They are pushing hard against the forces of division and distraction in our politics. Because there are folk who are trying so hard to divide us. I'm running against the unelected senator of Georgia. She was appointed. The people of Georgia have been disappointed. She gives a lot of money to the Republican Party. And somehow she got a seat. When she went to that seat, she did not waste much time helping you to understand why she wanted it in the first place. She had barely unpacked. Had been there three weeks when she heard about the coronavirus pandemic. Rather than focusing on the folk who were sheltering in, she was focused on sheltering her own investments, profiting off of a pandemic while the people of Georgia were suffering and losing their jobs, and when it came time to give ordinary people some relief, she said, I see no need. She said it was counterproductive. Meanwhile, she was profiting off of a pandemic. Who does that? Who does that? Forgive me, I'm from the hood. Where I'm from, we would say, why they do that? spiritual home of Martin Luther King Jr. 
lying on the gospel. As we say in church, calling me everything but a child of God. Scandalizing my name. But that's all right. My, my mother down in Savannah, Georgia, she said, it's not what they call you, it's what you answer by. And in a few days, she can call me Senator Raphael Warner. to you 
John Ossoff to the stage one time. Day. The eyes of the nation are on Georgia right now. The eyes of the world are on Georgia right now. Feel your power, Georgia. Tomorrow we make history. Now I want you to say it with me now. Say vote. Say vote. Say vote. Tomorrow we make history. And think about how far we've come, Atlanta. Think about how far we've come in the great state of Georgia. Think about how far we've come in the American South. Georgia is the most competitive battleground state in the United States. You did that. You did that. And now hosting two runoff elections for the United States Senate to determine control of the United States Senate. Your standard bearers are the young Jewish son of an immigrant and a black pastor who holds Dr. King's pulpit at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Think about how far we've come, Atlanta. Think about how far we've come. And we're running against We're running against like the Bonnie and Clyde of corruption in American politics. Two United States senators who, when they learned about this pandemic that was bearing down on our shores, when they learned about the threat posed by a virus that's now killed more than 300,000 of our fellow Americans, their first call was to their stockbroker. Atlanta, we deserve better, and retirement is coming for David Perdue and Kelly Leffler, Atlanta. But see, we have bigger and better things to discuss than David and Kelly. Like where we go from here as a people. Where we go from here as a community, as a state, as a nation. We've had four years of hatred and racism and bigotry and lies and incompetence. But Donald Trump is leaving. And Georgia voters sent Donald Trump packing. You did that. So now it's time to rebuild. Now it's time to build an America that's defined by love, that's defined by unity, that's defined by compassion and empathy. Those are the substance of community. Those must be our guiding lights because we love each other. I'm going to take a page out of the Reverend's playbook. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you love him. This is about love. I love you too. And we are building a movement based on love for health, jobs, and justice for the people. Health, jobs, and justice for all the people, Atlanta. Let's talk about health for a moment. 300,000 Americans 
lives killed by this virus, our hospital systems, our nursing homes, buckling under the weight of this pandemic. So many who have lost so much. Loved ones buried. Loved ones who have lost their lives, unable to see or touch their loved ones as they pass. A government that has lied to us every step of the way. We can beat COVID-19, Atlanta. We can pass legislation to rush resources to hospitals and nursing homes. We can make sure every American gets access to testing and vaccines free of charge. We can beat COVID-19 and get our daily lives back. And do you believe like I do, Atlanta, and like Reverend Warnock does, that health care is a human right? Health care is a human right and not just a privilege for those who have enough money in their bank accounts or who live in the right zip code. I was just down in Cuthbert, Georgia a few days ago, Randolph County in South Georgia. Y'all, they lost their hospital in October. Here in the United States of America, the wealthiest country in the world, in the middle of a pandemic, their hospital closed. And now the people of Randolph County, if they need an emergency room, they've got to drive an hour and a half to go to Columbus or Albany. And it's one of nine hospitals we've lost in Georgia in the last 10 years. You sent me and Reverend Warnock to the Senate. We will deliver the resources to reopen those nine hospitals and to build new clinics in every corner of this state because health care is a human right. We will stand up to the drug companies that are ripping off Georgia families at the pharmacy every single day, charging outrageous prices for life-saving medicine and insulin. We will ensure that every single American has great health insurance, no matter their ability to pay, whether they have a pre-existing condition, suffering from asthma or diabetes or a cancer survivor. Because Georgia, health care is a human right, and we will make it so in the United States of America. And let me give a special shout out to all the mothers out there. Let me give a special shout out to my mama who is here. Where is Heather? I love you, mom. Y'all may not know this, but my wife, Alicia, works as an OBGYN doctor at Grady Hospital in labor and delivery right here in Atlanta. And she sees every day at work mothers who struggle, who suffer, babies who struggle into this world because our leaders have refused to expand Medicaid, because our leaders have refused to invest in maternal health. We have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the entire country here in Georgia. And if you send me and Reverend Warnock to the U.S. Senate, when you send me and Reverend Warnock to the U.S. Senate, we will surge resources to save lives, to make sure every county in this state has an OBGYN doctor. Because health care is a human right, Atlanta. Health, jobs, and justice for all the people. Let's talk about jobs. Millions have lost their jobs during this crisis. Millions facing eviction and foreclosure. Small businesses across our state operating at 20 or 30 percent capacity. Gas bill piling up. Credit cards maxed out. Families that can't afford child care. And for eight months straight, the United States Senate blocked the direct relief that the people needed. Let him never deceive you. David Perdue opposed direct stimulus for the people all year long. Last week, David Perdue changed his tune. Well, guess what? There's an election coming. Georgia, you deserve senators who have your back, not just when they're about to face the people, but at all times. 
And when you send me and Reverend Warnock to the Senate, we will pass those $2,000 stimulus checks that the people need, that families need to stay on their feet and in their homes. We will pass the most ambitious jobs, infrastructure, and recovery program in U.S. history. We will upgrade our public schools. We will build those clinics and hospitals. We'll upgrade transit and transportation to connect every county here in Metro Atlanta, to connect every city, every corner of the state, and to connect Georgia with the rest of the Southeast. We will create tens of thousands of jobs in clean and renewable energy, saving our planet while we make America the number one producer of clean energy in the world and Georgia the number one producer of clean energy in the South. Y'all, I want you to feel what we can achieve together. I want you to feel what is possible. I want you to believe in what is possible. And look, here's the bottom line. If Mitch McConnell and the Republicans hold on to the Senate, they will try to do to Joe and Kamala exactly like they tried to do to President Obama. But we have too much good work to do for things to be ground to a halt in our nation's capital. We need to raise the minimum wage to $15. We need to expand the Pell Grant program so no young person in this state has to take on debt to get a degree from a public college or from an HBCU. We need to relieve the burden of student debt from those who are currently struggling to get out from under their loans. We can do all these things when we win tomorrow. We can deliver health, jobs, and justice for the people, for all the people. Let's talk about justice, Atlanta. Let's talk about justice. I mentioned my mother a few minutes ago. Y'all may not know this. My mother came to this country as an immigrant when she was 23 years old, alone as a young woman. It takes a lot of courage to uproot your life at that age, move to the other side of the planet, and start new. But like so many immigrants, my mother came to this country because she believed that this country stood for certain ideals. Let me be clear that that doesn't mean that she indulged any fantasies about our past. That doesn't mean that she didn't recognize how much further America had to go. She became a young activist. My mother was marching in the streets for the Equal Rights Amendment in the 1970s. She had me walking around the house when I was three or four years old with one of those ERA Now buttons on. So now you see where I'm coming from. My mother became an activist, and my mother became a citizen because she recognized that the ballot box is where we demand progress. The ballot box is where we hold elected officials accountable. The ballot box is where we ensure that this country keeps moving on a journey of progress toward fully realizing the very best of our founding ideals. Equality in God's eyes. Equal justice for all. Equal justice for all. The Constitution already guarantees equal protection under the law. But when Ahmaud Arbery is shot to death in broad daylight in the street on camera, and the local authorities look the other way because he is a young black man, that makes a mockery of equal protection under the law. So Atlanta, are you ready to fight to pass a new Civil Rights Act? that will secure equal justice for all, no matter the color of our skin? Are you ready to fight to pass a new Voting Rights Act that will secure the sacred franchise that John Lewis and so many bled and suffered for? Are you ready to fight for health and jobs and justice for all the people? Are you ready to send a message that echoes not just from coast to coast, but down the generations about what this state stands for? 
Atlanta, we just have a few hours left. I'm asking you to dream about what's possible. I'm asking you to believe in what's possible. I'm asking you to work to make real what is possible. No regrets. No regrets. We are on the cusp of a historic victory. Feel it. Know it. Believe it. Work for it. Atlanta, are you ready to work? Atlanta, are you ready to win? Atlanta, are you ready to elect two new United States senators? Atlanta, say it with me again. Say vote. Say vote. Say vote. I love you all. Thank you so much. God bless you.
first time voter. I don't have words to describe the feeling I had holding that ballot in my hand. For the first time, I had a voice, a voice that would impact our country's future. I didn't expect to experience that feeling for another four years, but here we are. Today, we Georgians have the power to bring COVID-19 relief, to reform our criminal justice system, to move towards cleaner energy. However, none of this can be done if we don't all vote. Whether this is your first election or your 20th, your vote will dictate the future of our country. We are in a time when leadership is needed. We are in a time when our voices need to be loud. So please, Georgia, use your vote, your voice, to put John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock in the U.S. Senate. It is now with great honor that I introduce President-elect Joe Biden. It's good to be back. Let's hear it for Allie. For that introduction and the great lineup of entertainers you've had. You're probably disappointed here not speaking. We'll get the entertainers back on here. And let's hear it for Stacey Abrams. Nobody, nobody in America has done more for the right to vote than Stacey. Stacey, you're changing Georgia. You've changed America, and I want to personally thank you again. So let's hear it for the next Public Service Commissioner, Daniel Blackman. I don't know where Daniel is, but I know he's here. Look, and one of the best mayors America has, and my good friend, Keisha Lance Bottoms. If I had three of her, I could rule the world. I love her, I tell you. And let's hear it for the next United States Senator, John Ossoff, and the Reverend Warnock. I just talked to them in the back. They're talented. They're principled. They're qualified. They're decent. They're honorable. They mean what they say, and they believe what I believe the definition of America is. It's about possibilities, unlike any other nation in the world. Anything's possible. They're bending the arc of history toward justice and hope and progress. And that's not hyperbole. That's real. Folks, this is it. This is it. It's a new year. And tomorrow can be a new day for Atlanta, for Georgia, and for America. First, let me start by saying thank you for electing me and Kamala as President and Vice President of the United States. You voted in record numbers in November. Your voices were heard. Your votes were counted. The will of the people prevailed. We won three times here. <laughs> Each recount, you know what I mean? I think we should count it as three states. Won three times. And now, we need you to vote again in record numbers to make your verses, your voices heard again and again to change Georgia, to change America again. And this is not an exaggeration. Georgia 
The whole nation is looking to you to lead us forward for real. You know it. You cannot turn on any national television show without knowing about what's going on here and what you all are doing. The power, the power is literally in your hands. Unlike any time in my career, one state, one state can chart the course, not just for the next four years, but for the next generation. By electing John and the Reverend, you can make an immediate difference in your own lives, the lives of the people all across this country, because their election will put an end to the block in Washington that $2,000 stimulus check, that money that will go out the door immediately to help people who are in real trouble. Think about what it will mean to your lives, putting food on the table, paying rent, paying problems with your mortgage, paying down the credit card, paying the phone bill, the gas bill, the electric bill. Just look around. Millions of people in this country are out of work through no fault of their own. No fault of their own. They're struggling. Many are fearful, and many have given up hope. Look at the lines at food banks. Hours and hours and hours. This is the United States of America, for God's sake. And their food lines, like we've not seen since the Depression. And they're getting longer. Families, children, people have worked their whole lives and never asked for a thing except a fighting chance. Now, they're lining up for food in America. And the debate over $2,000 isn't some abstract debate in Washington. It's about real lives, your lives, the lives of good, hardworking Americans. And if you're like millions of Americans all across this country, you need the money, you need the help, and you need it now. Look, Georgia, there's no one in America with more power to make that happen than you, the citizens of Atlanta, the citizens of Georgia. And that's not an exaggeration. That is a literal, that's literally true. If you send John and the Reverend to Washington, those $2,000 checks will go out the door, restoring hope and decency and honor for so many people who are struggling right now. And if you send Senators Perdue and Loeffler back to Washington, those checks will never get there. It's just that simple. The power is literally in your hands. By electing John and the Reverend, you can break the gridlock that has gripped Washington and this nation. With their votes in the Senate, we'll be able to make the progress we need to make on jobs, on health care, on justice on the environment, on so many important things. By electing John and the Reverend, you'll be voting to get the states the resources they need to get the vaccines distributed. It's a shame what's happening now. It's a literal shame. I've said it before, <clears throat> getting America vaccinated will be one of the most difficult operational challenges this nation has ever faced. But we've known it for the last months. This administration has gotten off to a god-awful start. The president spends more time whining and complaining than doing something about the problem. I don't know why he still wants the job. He doesn't want to do the work. Look, the states need help. There's a reason why the Constitution said the federal government could have a deficit spending in times of crisis, and states have to balance their budgets. It's for this very thing. It's the whole idea. Your states have to balance your budgets. So what's happening? You're going to see more and more people laid off, more firefighters, police officers, school teachers, first responders, the people we need badly now. The states need more money to do the job. They need the federal government to work with them not attack them and leave them out there hanging. It's going to be tough to get this done, but we have to do it. People's lives literally depend on it. Our economy depends on it. And we'll get it done by electing John and the Reverend to be voting to get their state and local government funding and the money they need. 
to keep cops, firefighters, teachers, local responders, keep them on the job protecting you and looking out for your children. Look, states have been struggling through this pandemic. They need help. And by electing John and the Reverend, you'll be sending a powerful message to Congress and to the country that it's time for this nation, for God's sake, to finally come together, finally, to work together, to unite, with the anger and the division and the divisive politics of the past behind us. And here's one more thing. Voting for John and the Reverend won't just be good for America. It'll be good for Georgia. And here's why. When you vote for John and Raphael, you'll be sending two senators who will fight for you, who will put Georgia first, who will put you first. You don't have that now. You have two senators who think it's more important to reward wealth than hard work in a tax system. You have two senators now who think they don't work for you, they work for Trump. I mean, think about it. You have two senators who think their loyalty is to Trump, not to Georgia. You have two senators who think they've sworn an oath to Donald Trump, not to the United States Constitution. But <laughs> let me tell you something. I got elected when I was 29 years old and six more times the United States Senate from Delaware. And guess what? Not once did I think I took an oath to any president, Democrat, or Republican. I took an oath to the United States Constitution. And as president, I don't believe your United States senators are going to work for me. They work for the people of Georgia. That's why I'm not asking your senator to be loyal to me. I believe they should be loyal to you, to Georgia, the United States Constitution, period. And if you vote for John and the Reverend, that's what you're going to get, decent, honorable men. They won't put a president or party first, and they sure won't put themselves first. They know public service is about you. It isn't about them. It's not about enriching themselves. It's about making people's lives better, about giving people a chance, just an even shot, no guarantee, but an even shot. It's time to start rewarding work and not wealth. And if you listen to John and the Reverend, that's what they've been saying. That's what they've been campaigning on. Look, I'm dealing with COVID. I'm revitalizing our economy, our health care our voting rights, criminal justice, racial justice, climate change, are the things that matter and will make a difference in your lives and the lives of your families. Georgia, as dark as these days of winter seem, I'm still more optimistic about this country than any time in my entire life. I really mean it. The American people now understand clearly what's at stake. John and Raphael share that optimism. They saw firsthand the power of believing in the promise of America in our darkest months. John learned it from my old friend and yours, John Lewis. Reverend Warnock sees the power of faith to overcome the toughest trials that life can throw, us, throw at us. He believes, as I do, in the quote of the German philosopher Kierkegaard, who said, faith sees best in the dark. I know they share with me that deep faith in the American people in this country, a faith that enables us to overcome adversity, to lift each other up, to be a beacon of light for one another and for the world. That's who we are, and that's we should never give up on. Look, folks, I've said many times, and I'll say it here again, there's nothing, and I say this again, nothing, nothing, nothing this country is unable to do when we decide to do it together. We have faced tougher times before, and we've always overcome. We've always overcome. We've always come out better than we went in, no matter what. I know these campaigns, this campaign has been exhausting. You've put the hard work in over the last few years to get to this moment. It's been intense. It's been nonstop. But I'm asking you to give everything you've got one more day. One more day. And that one more day, this is not hyperbole. You 
you can change America. So if you haven't voted, vote. If you already voted, and I'm asking you one more day of making calls and safely knocking on doors. Go to IWillVote.com slash GA to find your polling location. Just like you did in November. Vote, vote, vote. Vote for John and the Reverend. Vote in America. As our opposition friends are finding out, all power flows from the people. From the people. That's our history. That's our law. That's our tradition. That's our constitution. That's our democracy. Politicians cannot assert, take, or seize power. Power is given, granted by the American people alone. <laughs> and we can never give that up. It's always, always the will of the people that must prevail. So today, tomorrow, vote. Make sure your voice is heard. Do it for yourselves. Do it for your families. Do it for your children. Do it for your state, your country. Do it for all those who have given up so much. Think of all those who have given up so much to secure that right. Do it for the country you love, because I know you love this country. And the future you want to build for everyone in this country. Do it for all those around the world who aspire like us to be free and a democratic people who look to us. I've been in over almost 100 countries. They all look to America. The power, the power is in your hands. John and Reverend Warnock are counting on you. So is Kamala, so am I, and so is America. We're a nation built on honor, decency, dignity, and respect. America is and must continue to be a beacon of light, liberty, and democracy, and unity. That's who we are. That's the United States of America. Vote, 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 vote. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.